Okay, thank you for joining everybody. Um, the main purpose of us today is to update you all on the expedition. We want to give you some insights into our PR and communication plans. Um, so Sasha will update you on the status of the expedition itself. Um, some, some training is going on right now, so she'll give you an insight into that and um, recent highlights. Jackie Peterson will update you all on the PR plans. Uh, existing and upcoming. Amanda Brackey is going to briefly cover the social media activity and countersin, and then we will be joined by uh, geography teacher Kate Stockings, who is um, leading on our schools program. We don't um, have a huge amount of time uh, for questions because you're all very busy, but please do post them in the chat for a while and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll answer what we can. Um, and then obviously we'll follow up with a, um, a, an, an email afterwards anyway to answer any outstanding. I don't think there are any other housekeeping issues. So uh, Sasha, would you like to kick off? Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all for coming to join the, the call. Um, this is because we realised that it's been quite some time. Some of you have been communicated with recently, some of you it's been quite a while. Uh, but the expedition behind the scenes has been moving on at a great pace. Um, so we thought we'd give you a brief, a brief update on, on all kinds of things. So just to remind everybody, the point of this expedition is to be asking, Britain drove the Industrial Revolution, can we drive the Green Revolution too? But we're doing it in a really, hopefully, an exciting, engaging way through the, through the eye of, of an adventure, through a big, um, big aerial views, and I'm so sorry about the background noise. Um, and whilst we are attempting a Guinness World Record for a circumnavigation of the country, starting and ending in Glasgow, the real story that we're trying to tell is that of all the people around the country who are already doing amazing things around climate uh, to tackle climate change. Um, as we know that for a lot of people, uh, climate change is a bit of a kind of climageddon, but we want to change the narrative with this project. So it goes from being, uh, climate change goes from being something kind of big and gloomy on the horizon and can be reframed as an adventure, a challenge that we can all tackle if we get together, because people love adventures, they love climbing mountains, um, and, uh, and we think this is all doable. Um, and I also noticed, um, basically, within just within our team, we've had all sorts of uh, volunteers and others working behind the scenes, uh, many of whom have got a, a fair amount of climate anxiety, and just the process of research into the stories that we're going to cover around on this journey, um, has been inspiring and motivating for a lot of them. And that's what we want to replicate on this, on this journey. So I will go right now into a bit of the nuts and bolts um, of the project. So the status of it, the, the expedition itself, the, the electric power motor, as you know, is a, is a pretty new invention and we've had been making a few modifications to it. We now have the batteries in the country and we have six of them, so we can do multiple flights. The power motor is tweaked and ready to go. The new wing, which is super efficient um, and also does good slow takeoffs and landings, has arrived. And we have taken uh, possession of a fleet of vehicles. Uh, do you want to quickly show us a shot of the shot of the vehicles? Obviously, you can see one behind me, and uh, you can see exactly what what that is. We've got two vans. We also have two e mockers, which are smaller smaller vehicles. Uh, so that's basically it on the start of the expedition. We pretty much have everything we need to press go on the whole thing. Uh, the date for that is so the 18th. We're having a launch in Glasgow. We're then going up to Loch Lomond for a couple of days to have the whole team together and to practice with the vehicles, practice the, the charging routines, the camp set up, just basically to get all the details around that sort of thing worked out. Um, we have, I don't know if we've mentioned before to everybody, but it's still under wraps that we have Joanna Lumley and, and an ITV documentary happening around this now as well, but that hasn't been externally announced yet. Some of you may have heard that. She's gonna join us for a day, uh, a day in camp up in Loch Lomond as well, just to get the whole thing kicked off. She also made a very significant donation in getting the whole project off the ground, which was amazing. Um, where are we at then? So that is the general idea of the launch event. What else have I got to say on that front? Have I covered off the kind of status of the expedition? Any team, anything else to add? No? Okay, that sounds about right. Okay, the next thing, the expectations. So quite a few people have asked questions about 
um, paramotor flying, etc. Um, I wanted to show you all because some of you won't know what a paramotor is, and I've been asked a few questions yet. Louis, would you mind trying to play and share with everybody? So, for any of you who can see that, that's basically what takeoff looks like. Anyone who's thinking we're a kind of aircraft or might do any kind of damage to crops or property or whatever, that is basically what takeoff in a paramotor looks like. Um, it's if the wind is if the wind is right, the wing gets up in the air. Um, you get the propeller going and it's a few steps and you're taking off um, and we'll show that we'll try and show this trailer shortly, um, which will show you a, a landing in, in it. Right, so that is basically what the takeoff and landing looks like in it. The expectations in general around flying. So each electric, uh, each battery will last, each battery weighs about 18 kilos and it will last between 30 and 45 minutes depending on the conditions, how high I have to fly um, and the, yeah, the conditions at the time, also how fast I fly. So there'll be a conditions where I'll choose to fly fast because I might have a bit of a side or a headwind. Um, we'll be aiming for the maximum distance possible, but it might be that if I choose to fly at a, um, to get the maximum distance, I have to go for high speed and at high speed, you're a bit less efficient. So the flight times might be a bit shorter. So the reality is every day we'll have an, an end point. Again, sorry about the motorcycle that's going past. Um, can you still hear me over the top of the traffic? Yep, okay. Um, so yeah, each, uh, each, each day we will have a, each flight will basically have a, an idea of where we want to get to next. And I will have to pretty much follow the road because we won't know exactly the intermediary stops we'll need to make. I will fly the maximum distance I can on a battery till about 15%. Um, and at that point, you need to start to come down and look for a landing site um, so that you can land with a bit of extra power. Um, so that you've always got that there, just in case you come into a landing site and realize it's actually not suitable. Um, it's completely okay to land anywhere in a, in a paramotor. You do generally need permission to take off. So we'll aim to get permission wherever we can to take off again. But as you've seen, it's just a few steps once we've done the battery changeover. So we will uh, leave a message everywhere we go to. So we'll at least say to people, thank you very much for being a, a host, a, a landing and a refueling site for, the, for this expedition. Get in touch with us if you would like to. Um, but I have never yet had a problem apart from one school in Rochester, which I can tell anybody about uh, later on if you want to hear it. So that's broadly um, the, the, the flight, the time for the, the altitude I'll fly at. In a paramotor, you can fly as high as you like, as long as you stay out of airspace. I have full um, GPS and airspace data on my lap in front of me, so I'll always know what's what. Um, but uh, yeah, well, I'll fly, I'll try and fly as low as possible because of the you don't need to expend extra energy in trying to get to altitude so um that's the general rule there um what else oh yeah following road so that the changeover so that the, one of the ground crew vehicles which will have the spare batteries and i we can do that ch um, changeover as efficiently as possible so in each day it would be great if we could do a uh, 100 kilometers a straight line 100 kilometer distance um on average overall if the conditions are great. Um, fingers crossed for perfect conditions all the way around and tailwinds. Um, we got very lucky across Arctic Russia, what we thought would be two weeks was a five day, five day trip in reasonably good conditions. So it might happen again. Um, any other burning questions on, on um, the expectations around flight? Jackie, can you um, think of any library in this? Yeah, um, I think uh, just just uh, if you could if you could if you could run through uh, when you when you're landing at various sites, what um, and, and interviewing people, uh, yep. what kind of what kind of things uh, we're going to be asking? Okay, right. Yes, I'll get to that one. So very okay. Very briefly, let me go through so our, our next week's um, our next week's uh, recce trip. So that will answer if that will tie down a few more details. We are doing a, a practice expedition on um, just the other side of Dartmoor on uh, based out of Derek Gow's farm, actually, if anybody of you know that, uh, any of you know that. So we'll be putting up the entire tent. We'll have most of the team there. We'll practice the live broadcast from there, um, flying to the coast and back, so to Tintagel Castle, um, interviewing Derek and sharing that, those stories with the media. We think Good Morning Britain may or may not be turning up to that as well. Um, so that will that will give us a much better idea and we'll be able to record some videos of exactly what the camp setup looks like. Um, in fact, Ruth, would you mind just showing a quick picture of the tents just so people can see the size of the general group tent that we will have? Please post any questions in the chat, Ruth is asking. So if you have any questions, 
that is broadly the size of our tent. So it's a large one. That's where the team will um, convene uh, in the evenings. It's the edit space, the place to greet people. We'll be eating in there and hanging out. But individuals have their own personal pop-up tent, so they don't have to be close to anybody else if they don't want to be. Um, we're all going to be in each other's pockets for a good a good six plus weeks. Um, okay, so and that's the takeoff. So what we're expecting is that because the paramotor can only take off in up to 12 mile an hour winds, well, it can only come to take off in that um, because the as you're getting the wing up in the air, the, the point at which the wing has most power is when it's at about this angle. And that's where if you've got a wind behind you, if it's more than 12 mile an hour, it's quite hard to stop you from yourself from being dragged, uh, dragged forwards. So that's a that's a pretty strict limitation. We can land in a bit more than that. Um, the we will be beholden slightly to the, the conditions on any day and the weather. So the, the main camp will move between campsites that we have agreed and there are places where there's a great story we want to cover and a campsite or a place to camp has been offered with toilet shower and power if possible. Um, they don't not all sites have power but we do have a big uh, recycled battery pack which has been uh, donated to us which is excellent so we are a bit more mobile. We have also been given a compost toilet that uses coffee grounds but I think we're all quite keen to avoid avoid using that uh, if we can um, for, for in the camping scenario but we, we can be a bit more mobile. Um, okay, so that is the general plan for moving between between sites. It might be that I, if the weather conditions are great and I arrive at camp, that I stay for an hour or two hours and in the evening decide to fly on again. And that's there's another important point on the weather that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, because of the, the limited wind range that a paramotor can fly in and the benefit of having really light winds or tailwinds, but certainly not headwinds for making distance, and the battery and the battery power, power, the best conditions are most likely to be at the crack of dawn. So we can fly from half an hour before sunup to half an hour before sundown. So it's quite likely that I will want to camp in the same field that I landed in, actually sleep in that field, and then fly as many flights as possible until the batteries run out. And then we have to wait a good few hours in the middle of the day because the batteries need to cool down. They need about uh, six hours to cool down, four hours to cool down, and then about the same again for uh, for recharging. So we have that limitation with the battery battery packs. Um, so it's likely that I'll be flying at the crack of dawn and in the evening. So I might turn up in a camp and spend some time there and then carry on flying, but leave the rest of the camp um, in place. Um, make up of the ground crew. I was going to what to expect. Okay, let's now get on to uh, what to expect. Um, I was, I did say to all of the ground crew, if they could join the call briefly, that would be great. And we would spotlight them. I don't know if anybody can, Reef, are you able to see your eyes are wide now? Like, don't make me do this. <laughs> so if there's anybody in the ground crew that we can spotlight, in fact, Louis is one of them. Would you mind coming around, Louis, for a moment? Just so you know what sort of faces to expect. Louis is um, our web manager, all things online, but he's also camp manager for, for the crew. Um, who else have we got that's visible? Dan. Dan is the second pilot. Um, mm -hmm. So he'll be doing, <laughs> he'll be responsible for the aerial aerial images and photographs and all the kind of remote landings with me. If it turns out we need it, Dan might also be carrying a spare battery um, for me. So that Dan's um, aircraft is the only thing that's not, that is powered by fuel um, as we need a, a second a second aircraft, which is kind of capable as a backup also for security. Um, but yeah, he could potentially be able to carry a, um, a, a battery. Anybody else in the call that we can spotlight, Ruth? No, not that you can see. Okay, they couldn't make it. Never mind. Um, Charlotte's not in here either. No, okay, fair enough. Um, what else do I need to cover? What else do we expect? Um, so yeah, e with each story, I suppose that's the key thing for, I think Jackie and others will go into the stories and the story planning and things in a moment. But I suppose generally from my point of view, what I will be really hoping that we cover from speaking to people is that we get your, we, as I said in the beginning, we want to be answering the question, can uh, Britain drive the green revolution? And this is all around climate. So we'll be looking to phrase the, what you do around the, the carbon cycle. So there's all different sorts of categories. All of your stories are gonna be quite different, but, but broadly we're gonna be asking you um, how your project fits in with the overall climate story. How is this getting us towards net zero, towards a more sustainable um, economy? Um, yeah, reducing our carbon impact. 
Um, if this is replicated, is there a chance for this to actually snowball? If other people get inspired by it, what can they do? Um, if, the, if it's that you, you need particular support or investment in order for your project to snowball, then we're happy to mention that as well. Um, and we also want to mention your personal stories. What were the moments that inspired you to go from whatever you were doing before to decide to focus on, on doing this? So that is another thing I found to be really impactful um, in, the, in the past. Um, and the only other couple of things I wanted to mention are very brief. Um, that is, as part of the Guinness World Record, not only do we need to show GPS records and everything else, we need people to sign the guest book to say, yes, we saw her take off and land. So there's plenty of third party um, records of that. Um, and the, one of the things that's really exciting as well, I will only mention very briefly because Kate is in the call, is that we are going to be connecting with schools around the country twice a week with a, with a video call. Um, but I'll pass over to um, Kate later on to cover that. Over to you, Ruth. So now I'm going to pass over to Jackie. Jackie's going to talk about um, PR and um, the plans that we have at the moment and what's coming up and other communication. <laughs> Um, so I thought I'd uh, start with uh, just quick, very quickly running through um, sort of very, very uh, simple things like uh, what press releases have already gone out and, and what's planned already. Um, we have, uh, we've already issued um, a pre-event release, um, various sponsorship releases, uh, the date announcement of, uh, of when we're going to start um, and uh, the education program also went out. And um, the sort of coming up, we've got next week, we, we've, the, the Sasha's uh, going to Dartmoor with the whole team to uh, do some training. So uh, we'll be issuing something there. There'll probably be um, a, a, a couple of uh, media crews from um, certainly ITV and possibly BBC South uh, Regional going along to cover that. Uh, plus we'll be looking at... Uh, uh, liaising with some of the local local media on that. We also want to be putting out the Joanna Lumley connection. Um, there's an involvement with Spurs that we'll be talking about. Um, we a number of technic sort of technical specialist publication type um, type releases to go out with uh, flying technology photo stories with uh, with uh, electric vehicles that kind of thing, um, and then. Um, Various various things around the uh, the education program, um, also the launch of a schools competition. So there's quite a, quite a lot going on um, in terms of press releases. Um, in terms of timings, I think um, Sasha already mentioned that uh, you've, uh, you've you've got the 18th as the launch date. There will be um, a launch event um, in in Glasgow. Um, at which um, we will obviously be inviting media and uh, hopefully we'll be um, staging the event with some of the uh, campsite uh, 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 paraphernalia that's uh, the, the tent that you've seen and we'll probably try and erect that um, in, in, in at the launch and so that people can see what the whole thing looks like. Um, so we'll be inviting uh, people to photo calls there. Uh, many of the, uh, the, 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 certainly the local media and also um, the uh, um, uh, t local TV people have said that they're uh, they're interested in uh, very interested in coming along and doing lots of things. So that's all looking good. Um, in terms of timings and planning for yourselves. Um, Perhaps uh, uh, if Ruth could just put up the slide. Okay, so so basically these are these are the timings um, from Glasgow. Um, if you if you those are the it's a, basically the weeks. So uh, we'll be visiting and between these points, all these points on the map are basically the points from the Guinness World Record point of view that we have to visit. Um, we do actually have another map, but it's really much too complicated to. Um, to to uh, to to um, show you in this particular um, forum, so um, it, and it, which has all the all the stopping off points on it, but uh, there are so many. There's probably at least 20, 20, 20 upwards um, between in, in each leg. So um, so 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 it's quite a complex uh, uh, looking map. We will be getting in touch with everybody that we're going to be visiting. Um, separately uh, to talk about uh, to talk about what uh, what what plans we can we can put together um, for PR activity locally so um, in general um, 
the, the, the overall media, if you're just looking at national media, we've uh, uh, we've uh, we've got some agreements and are in discussions with Good Morning Britain, um, The One Show, BBC News, BBC Breakfast, uh, certainly the Scottish uh, BBC and STV, very, uh, very interested. We've got the documentary with Joanna Lumley, which um, uh, Sasha mentioned. Um, there are um, a number of other and a number of the regional programmes. Um, we also have um, a, a, an, an agreement with um, Newsquest, who are the second largest um, regional uh, the newspaper, print and, and online um, uh, people in, 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 the, in the UK. Um, they've got about, uh, I think, I think about 200 uh, newspapers uh, online uh, online and print across across the uh, across the UK um, reach of about sort of I don't know nearly 30 nearly 30 million uh, visitors on their on their online so um, they've agreed to um, basically syndicate every single uh, release that we put out so that'll get us quite a lot of coverage with in in, in the regional uh, press and the press association have also um, Said that they will be, uh, they'll be, they, they'll be, sort of uh, very happy to distribute as well and work with us on on uh, not just the launch but also various places as we come around the country. Um, I think if that's okay, is everybody uh, being seeing that? I think we can sort of, or do you want to leave that up? I don't know. Um, so I guess um, when we get to visit each site. Um, from a logistics point of view, um, we, 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 because of weather issues and things like that, we, we, we probably wouldn't be able to give more than about three days notice of imminent arrival. Um, uh, but what we, what we would do is at every site that we stop at, we, I will be liaising with whoever it is there, PR representatives or whether you've got, um, uh, you know, sort of agencies or whatever. Um, at each stopping off point um, in order to maximise local, local PR efforts. Um, we know, and, and also some people I know are, are arranging events uh, or planning to arrange events at least um, around, around Sasha's arrival. Um, and if you, so if anybody wanted to think about that sort of thing, um, please do get in touch and uh, Ruth will be putting up some contacts later at the end of this. Um, so we'll be doing. Uh, we do, so the idea is basically we'll do a pre-release um, uh, photo call um, when people are uh, when when Sasha's due to arrive, and the team is due to arrive, um, saying you know keep 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 your eyes out in the skies. Um, Sasha is going to visit X Y Z sites. Um, she'll be interviewing these people, um, and we'll invite local media and local local uh, broadcast media to come along and uh, join in. Um, there's also um, possibilities at all these sites uh, in the evenings as well for um, for people that um, perhaps uh, she not able she's not able to go and visit to come along and join um, with with the with the campsite in the evening um, where we can also do interviews and arrange uh, arrange photo calls and all that kind of good stuff. Um, some of the stories, some of those stories around the country will we'll, we'll incorporate into uh, national uh, press releases as well. Um, we might combine some of the releases in certain areas, um, but just 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 to sort of, um, and then after oh, regionally as well. Also, we'd we'd, we'd issue a post um, arrival press release with photographs, sort of saying um, she was here. And this is this is who she spoke to, and, uh, and 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 these are all the exciting things that people talked about. So um, there's kind of double double bubble opportunity there. Um, in general terms, supporting your communications, I guess um, we uh, we'd certainly be able to send out um, after this. Uh, things like frequently asked questions that, uh, that that if you wanted for your own PR purposes or even internal communications in, in, in newsletters and things like that um, you know sort of sorts of silly questions that people ask like uh, how does how does she go to the loo um, so we we we'd kind of like like to be able to provide you with uh, with some of those things um, so that you 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 can answer the questions 
Um, we'd also, we'll also provide some in, uh, links at the end of this to um, images and press releases that you can use for your own purposes. Um, and if anybody's got any exciting um, projects that we may have missed, please do get in touch. Um, I think that's about it. Oh yeah, about, um, and the other thing is all the content and all the uh, um, all all the sort of press information that we're creating um, and the video uh, material that Sasha will be gathering and the team will be gathering uh, will naturally be uh, fed into social media uh, sources or channels rather as well. Um, which kind of uh, okay, Sasha wants Sasha's waving. She's saying something. I just realized I forgot a really critical thing that I was supposed to cover before you spoke, which was what we're actually filming. So the outputs from the project, because we have a ground crew of four media team plus an editor based in Glasgow, is we'll be producing one sort of one show type piece a day. Uh, we'll be creating aerial images, some 360 um, video news releases, which Jackie will be able to work with. So that's freely available for the media. Um, we'll also be doing a series of images as well on climate heroes. Now, most of you will balk at the idea of being called that, but um, it'll be a, a, a collection of images of people that tell a bit of their story in the, in the background. And we've got various different ways that could be used afterwards, including at COP and other future events. So a series of images of all the people that we've spoken to along the way. We'll also be getting box pops from the public on their, their, um, their perceptions of climate change, their willingness to kind of back a, a government that wants to be ambitious, for example. Um, and we'll be able to do live broadcasts. So we've got all the kit sponsored by Live View to be able to do live broadcasts. So yeah, that's, that's it. I just wanted to add in that. Excellent, thank you. The, um, uh, there was, there was um, one other thing actually, I think um, that, uh, that uh, I, I don't know if Sasha mentioned, but uh, if you have um, any, um, of your own footage um, hope, with, at a reasonable quality, um, we would uh, we'd be very happy to receive that and incorporate it into um, in, in, into our whole program. So, and I think uh, at the end again, Ruth is going to uh, put up a, 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 a little link. I think to uh, to uh, I think we're talking about we send it. I think is probably the best way of um, getting that over to us. Sorry, we transfer. I'll, I'll show you. The oh, we transfer. Sorry. <laughs> Great. Well, if that's um, everything on that front, um, I will hand over to Amanda, who will take us through our um, countersin, the second Guinness World Record, and what we're doing on our social. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'll give you a brief update on some of our wider comms activity, including social media. Um, but firstly. I wanted to let you know, um, if you're not already aware, um, that during the expedition, we'll also be attempting another Guinness World Record, um, one that everyone can get involved in. Um, and for this record, we're working alongside our partners, Count Us In. Uh, the attempt will be for the most pledges received for an environmental sustainability campaign in one month. It's quite a mouthful. Um, and the number that we need to beat is 140,001. And these are pledges from individuals. The month that we have chosen currently starts on the 18th of June um, and it carries on until the 18th of July. And we're asking people from all over the world to join us to take practical steps themselves uh, to protect what they love from climate change before it's too late. Um, to help promote the attempt, we've created a suite of materials. Ruth, if you don't mind just popping up a couple of those images. Now, these, these will be available um, for you to use um, across any of your own marketing channels, whether it be through email, email footers, Twitter, Instagram, or any other social media channels. Um, and there are more materials being developed as we move along. Um, you're able, you will be able to download some now and more as we develop further from the Conservation Without Borders, Round Britain Climate Challenge web pages. So um, with regards to this um, attempt, it's a community feel. We're all in it together. Um, it's what you can do as a person. So do share with friends, family, colleagues um, and help us to, to get to a second world record. It's a new world record um, of the most pledges to show that individuals are just as engaged in climate change as corporates um, and others 
uh, and communities as well. Um, in addition to the counter sin comms and promo, we will also be carrying out and continuing to, to develop other marketing and communication channels. So just quickly to highlight some of these for you to look out for um, and to contact us about if you're not already receiving any of them. Um, E-newsletters. So we'll be delivering regular E-newsletters to your inbox. Um, they'll cover off and give you updates on the expedition, good news stories uh, from around Britain, new opportunities for you to get involved, uh, useful insights, um, Q and A's, and um, what we'd like you and ask you to do with those when you receive them is to share them far and wide. So the more people that can read what we're doing um, and some of the exciting stories that we're generating, the better. You may also be aware that we have been hosting a series of round tables um, these take place every two weeks and cover some of the burning issues, I suppose, that need to be addressed uh, and discussed in the, in the lead up to COP26 but, and beyond. Um, they feature presentations that are really insightful from experts uh, and give the audience an opportunity to learn more, but also to ask questions to further de their, develop their knowledge of climate related issues with some of the sort of leading experts across the country. We will be sharing very shortly a calendar of all of the upcoming roundtables, so please sort of keep an eye out for those. However, our next event um, is next Wednesday, the 9th of June, um, and the topic that we're going to look at is how individuals, companies and communities can use their influence to drive towards net zero. Um, if you are on LinkedIn, please look at the Conservation Without Borders page. Please follow us. And the details for that are then will be on there. You'll also be emailed the, the, an invite to this directly. So it's an online live event that we'll be hosting next Wednesday. Um, just to cover off, and Sasha has just mentioned some of these, some of the ways that we can communicate and we will be communicating with you. Um, Please ensure that you take advantage of all of these to find out the latest news um, and the developments as we go along the expedition. Um, and new materials, as I said, are becoming available for you almost on a daily basis. So as Sasha said, regular updates to our website to follow the expedition progress from air on the ground, um, some underwater, they'll tell the stories of the expedition, but also the stories of the climate projects challenges along the way. There's a long, a huge list of stories that we have got that we will be sharing over the course of the expedition. Uh, daily video updates that might be around expedition progress, progress, projects visited, interviews with project owners and many more, aerial images each day, images that tell a climate story, uh, climate heroes images, so hero photos of the people that we meet along the way, and we're expecting to meet many of them. Um, Vox Pops with stakeholders, yourself and the public that we meet on the way, sort of demonstrating potential opinions on climate change, what they may have done themselves, what they think about the expedition, and also promoting our counters in Guinness World Records attempt. Um, a twice weekly video for schools, which um, Kate will talk to you about very shortly, and some amazing 360, 360 flying shots where it's possible for us to do that. So all of these resources will be available to help people discover and follow the expedition, um, and also to help us get the reach to get many, as many people as possible to sign up and pledge to count us in within our month to help us beat and to get our second Guinness World Record. Finally, um, please follow us across all of our social media channels and please tweet about us and use our handle so that we know you've done it so we can share and retweet. Um, the handles and all of our social media details will be coming up on the next slide. Um, Finally, if you have any suggestions that you feel we can adopt to help increase our reach and amplify our messages, again, please do get in touch with us. Thanks. Thanks, Amanda, that's brilliant. Um, I'm just going to, before I show our, our handles and things, I'm just gonna invite Kate Stockings on. 
Kate is a geography teacher and campaigner, and she is going to be helping to lead the school program alongside Sasha. Um, Kate, um, please tell us a little bit about it. Thanks, Ruth. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. My name is Kate and I am in my full role, a full time geography teacher and head of geography at a large comprehensive school in Camden. But I am um, volunteering with the team to run the schools program. So we've started recording videos. We've started front loading and um, the education platform with videos about the paramotor, about climate change, about the project and why it is so important. But the main plan, once the journey gets going, is that Sasha and I are going to do twice a week um, video check-ins, Q&As, with the idea being that these will be shown to students either in their form time registration in the morning or in their geography lessons or perhaps another lesson at some point during the week. So we've gone for twice weekly to try and maximise our audience um, and to try and make sure that students really do feel engaged and inspired by the concept of the journey knowing that they're going to check in with Sasha really regularly and see where she, and see where she's been um, we're aiming for lower key stage three, so we're an upper key stage two, so we're aiming for kind of nine to 13 year olds um, and a couple of videos that are already live for you to have a look at if you're interested. One of the main things for our school's programme is, as the others have mentioned, to build up to this competition and to invite students to follow the journey and follow what we're doing. And at the end, produce us a piece of work that answers Sasha's big question. And Sasha's big question is that Britain drove the Industrial Revolution. How could the UK also lead the Green Revolution? So as the videos get going, we're going to keep reminding students to, to have a go and to get involved with this competition. And we've actually decided to let them be as creative as they want and not restrict it to essays or print media um, like other competitions do. So we are inviting paintings, sculptures, videos, speeches. Uh, it could be an essay. It could be a photograph, whatever they want to explain how the UK can lead the Green Revolution. And um, the project, it just so happened, it's really timely that this is gonna be across the summer holidays, that they do their competition entry, having watched the journey just before the summer. So really good timing in terms of the school's program, um, and hopefully we'll get a lot of students involved. And of course, they will be a key part of the Countess in um, world record. So, at this stage, I think um, it was just for me to say if anybody has any ideas in addition for what we could be doing for schools, please do let me know. But we are obviously hoping to harness social media in particular with regards to teachers and the huge teacher community on um, social media and also traditional methods such as emailing to make them aware of what we're doing. Um, was that it, Sasha or Ruth, or did you want me to add anything else? That's brilliant. If anybody has any questions, please do put them in the chat. Um, but I think now I can hand uh, I can hand over to our final slide. So bear with me one second. This has all of the details for you to um, keep in touch with us. Obviously, we're going to be sending a follow-up email um, with um, which email we want you to send any footage you have to. If you can, we transfer it. That works best for us. Um, we'll also, obviously, as we said earlier, be sharing the footage that we're capturing throughout the expedition. Um, we have some photos and videos already up on our newsroom on our website, so please do check that out. And we'd love it if you could um, share that with your network. Uh, we also have started uploading the content for the schools programme, as Kate said. So um, this is our education platform. Please do have a visit. And again, if you know any teachers or have a network of schools, um, please send it to them. We're using uh, various hashtags on social media and I've put our handles here at the bottom. So please keep in touch. Uh, thank you for joining today. And uh, we will distribute, distribute a recording and a write up at the end of, um, sorry, after the weekend. So thank you very much and enjoy your weekend. Can I add one last thought or have we gone? Oh, we've gone, no, have we yeah, gone? Yeah. We've gone. I was going to say just on one last thought on, uh, yeah, thank you very much. If anyone can has got schools in their networks to share the program with, we're still looking to bring as many people as possible on board. Um, that would be great. Can you get rid of that window? Um, and the second thing is around the Countessin uh, record that whilst it is a, it is a record that we're hoping that will help to um, get general interest in it. It's also one of our key messages that I can take to COP at various different platforms. It's our key kind of indicator of the country is prepared to back people making big, big ambitious, um, uh, yeah, 
changes decisions uh, around climate. So yeah, the more it, it's more than a record, it's a, it's an indicator of overall um, enthusiasm for for the country, and we'll record that through the vox pops and everything else. Um, ideally from from voices from people from all around the place so yeah it's a it's a bigger message than that and yeah thank you very much for your massive contributions to it all because the sites and partners are, are really going to make this work um the, the the crazy lady flying in an electric paramotor um doing something difficult is just what gets their attention the real powerful stories are going to come from all of you thank you this summer, I'll be taking on a record-breaking challenge, flying 3,000 miles on an electric-powered paramotor around the entire coast of Britain, landing to meet the people working hard to tackle the climate crisis. We'll be showcasing their stories and solutions, not only in the air, but on the ground and underwater. It won't be easy. Not only has this never been done before, this will be the longest journey ever attempted by electric paramotor. The team and I want to prove what can be achieved with the latest technology, innovative thinking and just being bold enough to try. And this is just the start. We want you to follow and be part of this record-breaking journey. Help us to make this the biggest climate change campaign in history by rallying companies to get behind Race to Zero and breaking a second world record with the most pledges to act on climate change in one month with Count Us In. The question we're really asking is, if Britain drove the Industrial Revolution, can we drive the Green Revolution too? We will be taking the answers and your voices directly to world leaders at the UN Climate Change Conference. This will be a journey to see not only how far we can go without fossil fuels, but also how far the whole country is prepared to go to tackle the climate crisis. Whilst our individual actions may seem small, when we act together, we can really make great change happen for people and the planet.